Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Alleluia. What a glorious message and what a wonderful message and joy that we have today as we, as we come together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Easter, this Resurrection Day. We're glad that you're here with us here at Harlandale Christian Church. We hope and we pray that as we gather together to worship the Lord, that the, the joy of that the angels announced and that the disciples knew as they met Jesus resurrected fills our hearts and our lives today. We're reminded of one of the gospel writers, Matthew, as he records a portion of this uh, resurrection in Matthew 28 verses 5 to 7. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this glorious resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday that we rejoice in the power that you have shown in your resurrected Son, Jesus the Christ. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have to, to come together to worship you and to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We thank you for the privilege that we have of calling you our Father, even though you are the creator of all of the universe. You cared enough about us as of mankind that you gave your only begotten Son to redeem us from our sins. Father, we, we pray that as we worship and, and praise you and your Son, Jesus, today, that you'll receive our worship and our adoration, and we'll remember the, the love that you've shown to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
found that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Toils and snares I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home.
As we come to our time of communion and participating in the Lord's Supper today, uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, what better time to, to do this? We know we have the emblems of the bread and the cup reminding us of the la that Last Supper uh, before Jesus died on the cross that we celebrate on Good Friday as he gave his his flesh, his body, and his blood as a sacrifice for us, for our sins. And yet, how much better, how much more important for us to share in this time today, Easter. You know, many women might sympathize with Mary Magdalene and the other women at the tomb on Easter morning. They had started out, John tells us in his gospel, while it was still dark, now, any woman who gets up early to throw a load of laundry in the washer knows this feeling. The women were coming to anoint the body with spices. That was considered women's work in that time. So they walked there with no light, both physically 
and spiritually. They were expecting a corpse. But do you notice that they, didn't, uh, that they did their task promptly without hoping that someone else would volunteer, that someone else would take their place? Even in the hopeless times, duty's call should be answered. Sometimes maybe communion seems like that to us. Maybe communion seems to occupy some time between the music part of worship and the sermon. For some people, maybe it's a ritual that we've done it just because we've done it this way for years. A ritual, but maybe an empty one. And so for some people, they're just happy to hurry through it. Well, how can it be? How is it that we fall into this, this bad, dreadful habit? We have no light. It's still dark in our minds. How do we bring light to our minds? By following what the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church to examine ourselves so that there will be repentance to cleanse the heart and clear the mind. If we'll not do that, then all we have left is an empty ritual that we call communion. But some people might ask whether or not just performing the ritual is enough. Some of us were taught that way. Don't think, just do it. Indeed, the fancier the ritual, the better, right? And so to, dis to dispel this illusion, you need only to remember the words, let a man examine himself. We must never forget that we do this in memory of Christ's death, and we will do it only until he comes again. Communion looks forward as well as backward. And the true meaning is kept alive in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's to bring this out, we must remove sin as a barrier between us and our risen Lord. Examine yourself and submit yourself to him. Does it seem that as he has uh, been long by not coming, does it seem like he will never return? Patience, patience, first the cross, then the light. Our communion song today is Graves into Gardens. It's a fairly new song over the, come out over the last few years. We've used it a few times in our worship services. If you're not familiar with the words, I just ask that you pray and meditate upon these words. If you are familiar with it as the words are on the screen, we encourage you to sing along with us. Graves into gardens. Consider the message of this song as we partake of the Lord's Supper and meditate upon his resurrection. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity that we have to share in this communion time, this Lord's Supper today, Resurrection Day. Thank you for showing us the light, the light of your love, the light of your life in your Son Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Father, as we partake of these emblems, help us to remember that you take the, the grave, you take death, and in Jesus, turn it into life and light. Help us to remember that today, Father, as we examine ourselves and as we partake of these emblems, remembering your love and your grace. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better
Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you This is the second Sunday in, uh, in the second sermon in the Through the Eyes of Jesus series. So if you want to turn to Luke 24, that's going to be our passage uh, as we consider uh, our lesson today of Easter through the eyes of Jesus. Do you remember just a few years ago when Easter was on April 1st, April Fool's Day? I think I put something on Facebook that Saturday night that seemed to, to get some attention. I'd simply put that April 1st, 2018 has two holidays, Easter and April Fool's Day. And then I asked, which one of these holidays will get your focus? I remember when everyone used to go to church on Easter, Christmas, and Mother's Day. And over the last 10 years, Christmas and Mother's Day attendance has severely dropped. And of course, over the last two years especially, all attendance seems to have fallen. But over the last few years, even Easter attendance has dropped considerably as well. I mean, I became a preacher in 1976, local pastors would tell me that you don't count Easter uh, attendance whenever you count your average uh, of your worship service because it would give you an unrealistic average attendance for the month. Well, with all that said, I'm so glad that you're here today. Today, as all days, is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now, last week, we looked at Palm Sunday through the eyes of Jesus. And today, I want us to look at Easter through the eyes of Jesus. Our passage today is Luke 24, uh, 1 through 12, but let's read first the first three verses. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So just as we did last Lord's Day with Palm Sunday, what did Jesus see? Well, first we know that Jesus saw an empty tomb. The empty tomb is proof of Jesus' victory over sin, death, and Satan. Do you realize that morning, Jesus was the first man, God in flesh, God in man, but he was the first man to see the inside of an empty tomb. Some might say, oh, well, what about Lazarus? And yeah, That's a possibility. But we do know here, Jesus saw an empty tomb. Jesus had spent time in Hades, the scriptures tell us, because he'd become, he became the sin of the world for all, man, uh, all mankind for all of time. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he had defeated death. The empty tomb is what we as Christians celebrate today. But my friends, it's what we should celebrate every single day. Easter should be the most important day in our lives and in our Christian lives. The empty tomb gives you victory if you'll surrender your life to Jesus because without the empty tomb, there is no victory. There's no victory over the grave and there's no victory over death. There's no victory over sin. Then we consider verses 4 to 7 in Luke 24. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be, must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. So what did Jesus see? Jesus saw witnessing angels. Angels witnessing to his resurrection. Witnessing to the truth of his words and his message. <clears throat> I love how the angel reminded these female followers of Jesus of what Jesus had said would happen. Jesus said that he would be raised from the dead. Now we know, and, and we, we read a passage from, from John just a few minutes ago, these women were there to honor Jesus as a dead man. They were there to honor the corpse, the dead body. But what they received was the opportunity to worship him as the risen Savior, our risen Lord. And we too should worship Jesus as the risen Savior, not just today on Easter, not just on this Resurrection Sunday, but every day of our lives. He gave his life and was resurrected from the dead so that we might have the hope and the promise of life full in the Spirit even today but the hope and the promise of life eternal in heaven with him, with our Father. Jesus saw the empty tomb. He saw witnessing angels. What else did Jesus see that day? In Luke 24, verse 8, Luke says, And they remembered his words. Jesus saw resurrection believers. He saw people who believed in what he said. I love this too. They, they remembered his words. Oh, yeah. You know, is that what it takes? 
I th I'm afraid that sometimes that's exactly what it takes for us to believe nowadays. We don't believe things unless we see it with our own eyes. And these women that day saw the empty tomb. Whenever you're struggling, whenever you are in pain, whenever you are suffering anguish, whenever you have doubts, remember his words. And remember the words of the angels. He is risen. I am so glad that this is just a short portion of the story of the resurrection that when the angels told the women, they believed. That's all they needed to remember to believe in the resurrection, to hear. And they believed. And then in verses 9 through 11, Luke says, When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. What did Jesus see? Well, he now sees non-believers. Now he sees those who won't believe something unless they see it with their own eyes or unless they touch it with their own hands. After three years of being with Jesus every day, after three and a half years of hearing Jesus talk about his resurrection from the dead, these disciples and the other followers, they still didn't believe just from the women coming back and telling him. They didn't believe what these women were saying. How could the message of Jesus being the resurrected Messiah be believed just a few days before and then now become nonsense? That's a great question. How can people hear the message of Jesus Christ and not be saved? How can you hear the message and read the message of the grace of God given in the Lamb of God, Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary, put in the grave as a dead man, knowing that there was an empty tomb and you still not believe. Unfortunately, there are many people in this world today that don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are many people who still try to make this a fairy tale. Or maybe they try to make it the way that the rulers did in that day and, and just pass it off or have some other excuse for it. Jesus saw resurrection non-believers even among those who were closest to him. In verse 12, Luke tells us another person or group that Jesus saw. Peter, however, got up and, and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. What did Jesus see? Jesus saw resurrection wanderers, questioners. Peter wasn't sure, so his, his reaction was to run to the tomb. John, in his gospel account, says that he ran ahead of Peter and, and, uh, when they got to the tomb. Well, what this tells me is that they weren't sure. They needed to see with their own eyes. They needed to touch with their own hands. We know that in the story of Thomas as well. When Jesus had appeared to his disciples in, the, in that uh, upper room, Thomas wasn't there. When he showed up, he said, oh, I can't believe this unless I see him with my own eyes, unless I put my finger in his wounds and touch his body. When, Jesus, when, when Peter and John arrived to the tomb, they wondered what had happened. And I promise you, I tell you that there are many people today that are still wondering about what happened. 
In John, it says that the guards that were guarding the tomb, the, the rulers of the people told, told the guards to tell everybody that the disciples stole the body of Jesus because they didn't want people to believe what Jesus had said would happen if they put him to death. Resurrection, wanderers, and doubters. What did Jesus see? Well, he, see, he saw his own resurrection that he promised. But he also saw us. And he sees us and he saw us in one of, somewhere in this category, in these categories. So my friends, today I'd ask you, where did Jesus see you? Are you a believer? Are you a non-believer? Are you a wanderer of Jesus' resurrection? Jesus died, was buried, was raised from the dead, and then he ascended into heaven, and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God, waiting for the time when he comes again to receive us to the Father. Jesus saw the empty tomb. He saw the believer. He saw the non-believer. He saw the wanderer, the questioner. Which are you? I hope and I pray that today, this Easter, this resurrection, as Jesus' resurrection, as his physically, bodily coming back to life calls out to us today, I hope that we can sing and shout and praise Christ is risen I believe do you let's pray our father in heaven we thank you for your grace your mercy your love we thank you that you took the form of of man in your son Jesus you went to the cross of Calvary and you were pierced, torn, shed your blood, and you died so that you might offer the sacrifice for our sins. And Father, I praise you and I thank you for this day and every day that we can honor you and thank you that Jesus is alive that Jesus is resurrected father help us to to know that resurrection even today as believers and may our commitment may our lives shout to all of the all of those around us Christ is risen I pray in Jesus name amen Nope.
come away, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with Him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.